Hi everyone, in this video we're going to prove that the sum of uniformly continuous functions is also uniformly continuous. Uh, we'll assume they're defined on some set D, which is a subset of, let's say, Rn. It doesn't really matter, uh, it really will not affect the proof. So let me recall what it means for a function to be uniformly continuous. So we say function f is uniformly, I'll just say uni, Kant, uniformly continuous on a set D, which is, say, a subset of, say, Rn and dimensional space, if for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that for every x and y in D, with the distance between x and y being smaller than delta, we have the distance between f of x and f of y being less than epsilon. And here, uh, this, this absolute value symbol, we can assume it's the Euclidean distance, or it's the Euclidean norm. Everything is the same, the proof is the same even if you do it just for like real valued, fun or for functions defined on the real line, it's, it's all the same. So let's go ahead and go through the proof very carefully, so proof. So we'll start by assuming we have two uniformly continuous functions on D. So suppose f and g, are uniformly continuous, uniformly continuous on D. So we have two uniformly continuous functions on our subset D of Rn. And so now we have to show that the sum is uniformly continuous. So claim the function f plus g is uniformly, I'll just put, I'll say unicont on D. So, to show it's uniformly continuous, we have to show that this definition is satisfied for the function f plus g. By the way, f plus g is a function, it takes an element x, and it gives you f of x plus g of x. So this is the definition of f plus g, it's just the sum. Alright, good stuff. So, uh, let's start by letting epsilon be greater than zero. So let epsilon be greater than zero. Now, since f is uniformly continuous, since f is unicont, there exists, let's just say, delta 1 greater than 0, such that for all x, y in D, with the distance between x minus y less than delta 1, we have the distance between f of x and f of y say less than epsilon over 2. I, I have a feeling, I haven't done this yet, but I have a feeling that because we have f plus g, what's going to happen is when we get to this step, we're going to have to break it up and probably use the triangle inequality. I, I don't recall. I just grabbed this problem from a book and I thought, hey, let me just try to do it and I'll, and I'll record it, see if it works. So I think we're going to be able to use a triangle inequality. I don't know. I haven't worked it out. And so that's why I'm choosing epsilon over 2. So now we do the same thing. Oh, and I called it delta 1. That's a, that's a 1. Because um, we're going to have two different deltas for f and g. So I think if we take um, the smaller one, things, things will be, or the bigger one rather, things will be okay. Wait, no, the, yeah, the smaller one, things will be okay. All right. Um, so now let's do the same thing with, with g. Since g is unicont on D, there exists delta sub 2 greater than 0 such that for all x, y, and D with the distance between x minus y less than delta 2, we have same thing. Now it'll be g of x minus g of y less than epsilon over 2. So we want the condition to work for both f and g. So it works for f if x minus y is less than delta 1, and it works for g, oh, this, this holds for g, if uh, the distance between x and y is less than delta 2. So if the distance between x and y is smaller than the smaller of the two, then, then it should work uh, for both. So I, I feel like I'm running out of room here, so uh, I'm going to erase the beginning of the proof, which was just our hypothesis. So now we're going to take delta 
to be the smaller of the two. So delta is going to be the minimum of delta sub 1, delta sub 2. So that's going to be our delta for our proof. So we have our epsilon greater than 0. We chose our delta. So then for all x, y, and d with the magnitude of x minus y less than delta, we have, and now we're going to look at uh, the distance between f plus g of x and f plus g of y. So we have the magnitude of f plus g of x minus f plus g of y. Okay, we're a little bit slower now. This stuff here, I was just writing it down and spitting out the definition. This stuff here, I have to make sure you know it works. I haven't done this. So this is f of x plus g of x. Minus, and then this is f of y plus g of y, but um, it's in parentheses. So f of y plus g of y, like this, just to be perfect. Okay? All right. So I'm going to erase this. So we, we, we still have our epsilon greater than zero. I erase that. Um, so this, you can group these as this is f of x minus f of y. And then plus g of x minus g of y. Okay, and now what we can do, we know each of these is less than, this is less than delta over 2, this is less than delta over 2, if we have it in magnitudes, if we have the bars around it. So we can use the triangle inequality now. This will be the magnitude of f of x minus f of y plus the magnitude of g of x minus g of y. That's called the triangle inequality. It says that if you have if you have the absolute value or the magnitude of a plus b, that's less than or equal to magnitude of a plus magnitude of b. And then because x minus y is less than delta, and delta is the smaller of the two, in particular delta is, so let me just show it here and I'll erase it. So we have this, just to explain the next step very clearly, that's less than or equal to delta 1 because delta is the minimum of the two. So that means that this piece is less than epsilon over 2. And then at the same time, this is less than or equal to delta 2. That means that this piece, see, whenever this is less than or equal to delta over 2, this piece is less than epsilon over 2. And that's equal to epsilon. And that completes the uniform continuity proof. So this step here requires the fact that it's the minimum, right? Because delta is the smaller of the two. So because delta is less than or equal to delta 1, this is less than epsilon over 2. Because delta is less than or equal to delta 2, this is less than epsilon over 2. And then epsilon over 2 plus epsilon over 2 is equal to 2 epsilon. I hope this video has been helpful to someone out there in the world who is doing some mathematics. Take care.